Okay, I'm going to show how uh, I control an Arduino-based robot with the Google uh, Android-based Google phone through a USB serial communication. Both of them are using generated Simulink code and uh, deploy them both of them. And the Android phone is going to send commands from 0 to 5, indicating stop, move forward, backwards, right, left, and turn on the left. As you can see there, and the left is turned on, the sequence starts. That, that's why I turn on the robot in there. And you can see more moving forward, backwards, it's a little bit rough, but that can be improved uh, by the more time the, the logic in the cell phone. The cell phone is controlling the moment of producing the a little bit rough. So the models that I used were, was one for the Lego robot, another one for the, sorry, for the Arduino. Sorry, uh, one was the Lego a, a Lego robot, which is Arduino, this is the Arduino one, and the other one is the Android phone one. So the configuration for the Android one is basically setting the hardware target to Android device and the target serial properties to 9600, 9, and that's the same uh, baud rate for the Arduino. And to deploy it, I just hit uh, I have to have the Android Super Package and for the Arduino, the Android Arduino Super Package and hit build, start deploy and start and this is going to generate a simulating code, com a compile it and deploy it into the Android phone. You have to connect the, the Android phone through SQL cable. And for the Arduino, if the Arduino robot it brings a USB serial cable that is connected, it's a little bit different, it's connected to a computer. And again, uh, it's exactly the, the same thing. You have to hit build, deploy it, and start. It's going to generate similar code, build it, and deploy it into the Arduino. For the case of the Android, uh, basically I'm sending the commands. Uh, as mentioned, uh, stop, move forward, backwards, right, left, and turn on the left. And I'm using a push generator. Uh, maybe I can control this to make it less rough. I should. And basically, I make it a boolean by comparing against zero. And if the edge goes up, this subsystem is going to be activated and it's going to increment a counter. And the counter is going to determine the index uh, using modulus to avoid the values going up above five. And I cast it to sign integer 32, increment one, because the commands are from zero to five, but the indexes are one, one based. So I pass the array here. The array is coming from here, so use the index, get the command, and the command is sent through this serial a uh, block, uh, which is an Android serial block. It has the same baud rate as the Arduino, so the Arduino should be re receives that, that information here. And I'm using on side integrate eight in both sides. Uh, if you don't have type match, you can it's not gonna work. It happened to me. And yeah, so basically this is going to go to a control, but before controlling the robot, uh, this value is passed forward. If it, if, if, it, if it is valid, it's passed forward back into another transmit serial block, and that uh, goes back into the Android. And the Android is going to display it. Uh, yeah, this is the Android, so it's going to get the value from the Arduino. And display it into the display of the cell phone, and that's what we see in in the video. You can see that this value here that goes from zero to five is. Uh, you can see here uh, this is coming from the Arduino. It's basically making sure that the Arduino is receiving information from the cell phone. That's what that's what is happening is happening in there. Okay, uh, so going back to the Arduino, um. Uh, the implementation of the controlling the, the motor, uh, they has a uh, five, no, uh, seven ports. All of the blocks are the same. You just have to configure the port number, and the port number is depends on the configuration of the Lego robot. I'm basically using, uh, I mean, basing this simulator model on this program, uh, which basically sets a port uh, of these seven pins, and forward has one configuration. Back has another configuration, left another configuration, right, uh, stop is everything zero, and left is just updating the state and the setup, and yeah, basically it's the switch. So I'm basically doing something very similar.
So I have in here, if the values come from 0 to 4, it means that I'm going to do control. So I go to a switch, and you, if you have the stop, everything is 0, everything is false. If you have a move forward, then this is the configuration, enable A and enable B are always true when moving the robot. And I'm using, using an action merge, a soft system combination, but uh, maybe state floor malfunction block will be us as well. Definitely using both two from uh, will have made this cleaner. And for the LED, it's simple. If you're 0 or 5, uh, you're going to compare against 5, and that's going to change the state of the LED. So that's about it for the control. Yeah, so that, that's basically it. That's basically it. Thanks.